the waste produced by an entire Tokyo neighbourhood ends up in the bottom of this pit. Clothes, cardboard and of course plastic. The dirty greasy plastic is in no condition to be recycled. And that's a big part of Japan's problem. Mixed amongst all the rubbish, there's also some clean plastic that could have been recycled. It's a shame. People should sort their waste properly so more items can be recycled. This plastic will be incinerated, as is 60% of all the plastic Japan produces. The Japanese are the biggest consumers of plastic in the world after the US. Visit a Japanese supermarket and you'll find that just about all of the fresh produce, vegetables, fruit, meat and fish, is wrapped in plastic. At the register, employees place wrapped items into a plastic bag and then into another plastic bag. Mio Takase is among a growing number of people who are battling Japan's addiction to plastic. This is wrapped in three different kinds of plastic. One is this, and then the second one is this plastic here, and then the third one is this here. It has quite strong skin, so it doesn't really need this packaging. It's not going to, you know... I don't know if I'm buying snacks or plastics. <laughs> For many Japanese, plastic is synonymous with hygiene, high-quality service, and even luxury. The government recently said it would ban free plastic bags by 2020, but it's meeting with resistance from supermarket chains worried about how customers will react to the change. It's nonsense. Even if you make people pay for their plastic bags, people who need them are still going to use them. And look at all this packaging. It looks so good with the plastic. It's clean and attractive to shoppers. Confronted by this mountain of plastic, Japan is investing more in one possible solution, recycling. Japanese households are supposed to follow strict recycling rules, and as a result, nine out of ten plastic bottles here are recycled. These bottles will be transformed into synthetic fabric. They will be used in cars, rugs and clothes. Some companies even make football jerseys out of them. And indeed, we can use these bottles to make brand new bottles. The center is setting a good example, but it's only one of two such facilities in Tokyo. Until last December, Japan sent more than a million tons of plastic waste a year to China. But China decided to put an end to importing these toxic and expensive imports. We're struggling to find places that can handle all this waste. Right now, Japan's recycling facilities are at full capacity, so we have no choice but to incinerate plastic as an emergency measure. But it's clear we won't be able to keep doing that forever. Japan's government wants to reduce plastic waste by 25% by 2030. To achieve that, it needs the private sector's help. Big companies like Starbucks are attending this waste workshop at the invitation of an environmental group. These employees are discussing how the firm could reduce its plastic consumption. Yeah, actually, the corporation takes a very big role in terms of the reduction of the plastics, of course. But at the same time, always their excuses is about like how the consumer needs to understand the importance of reduction of the plastics. So therefore, we want to integrate both elements or both perspectives. Despite these moves, Japan is far from becoming a plastic-free country. But there might be another solution, building cities on plastic. This landfill in southern Tokyo will soon be filled and become a site for parks, forests and buildings. Every part of the waste that can be recycled is removed before it gets here. None of the waste that arrives at this landfill can possibly be recycled, no matter how hard we try. So I think that using this waste to reclaim land Building an artificial island with grass, parks and a harbour is really a good idea. In Tokyo Bay, plastic land is already a reality. The futuristic Odaiba area was built on waste. 
These young people collecting litter on the beach probably don't realise it, but they're standing on an island made of plastic.